just imagine you founded a company in your home country and it's running really successfully and you're able to develop your business and your market share scales even further. But there comes a point further or later if you're really successful where you reach kind of the maximum of your potential growth. That's what happened with the Pallet company and what you should do and what are possible opportunities for you to do. That's what our presentation is going to be about. So I welcome everybody, especially Thess, who takes the time to come into our presentation, and all the judges, and of course Peter, um, to have a look at our presentation. It's our consulting proposal um, for the Pallet company about an international business strategy. I just want to give you some information about the agenda, about what we're going to talk today. Um, first, there will be an introduction, um, followed by the issue address, which will be followed by some background information from Sandy, then we will talk about um, the presented problem we are facing here, um, the investigation method, how we try to solve all that. Then we will talk about the analysis and we will close our presentation with some key recommendations for the company. But first I would like to make a short introduction to introduce you to our team. Um, on my left hand side we have Alan who is our literature review um, responsible. Then we have Kartik, who is our client relationship manager, and we have Sandy, who is our project analyst. The project objective of our project is actually quite simple. It's exactly what I talked about. You reached kind of your growth, and um, what are we going to do is it's about expanding the company's business successfully into a new market, which is in our case Australia. And that also comes to the issues that rest we're facing. So the big question is, what's next? So where are we going? If you um, develop into your home market a lot, um, there are different ways what you can do. And that's the problem the Pell company is facing at the moment. They are really successful in New Zealand, but there is a lot of potential in other markets. And we are trying to find out how big is the potential and what they could actually do in Australia. And now I'd like to hand the word over to Sandy, who will provide some background information about the Now, I'll talk about the background, the company history. The pilot company is the largest supplier of wooden pilot clips and beans for the his horticultural industry in New Zealand, which is the by Nick Brunton in 1995. And the pilot company has grown from one person small company a business for a multi branch company and now they employ over 120 employees national wide. The operating market there have three branches in New Zealand. Auckland branches they supply from Northland to the Bay of Plenty and Napier branch supplying the hockey base region, the Taranga branch supplying the Bay of Plenty area. Moreover, they export their pilots to Saudi Arabia, India, Australia, Tonga and New Caledonia. There are four aspects of competitive advantage quantity, the computerized cutting system and the Autopilot machine per 8 hour shift can produce over 2,500 pilots. And time, the operation DD time is, uh, is short and fast and for the Auckland branch is about 2 to 3 days. And price, they offer competitive pricing to customer at the same time provide with the high quality products. Now I pass to Cardit. Uh, the presented problem. The presented problem. The first problem is the calculation of market potential. So, so going so penetrate into the Australian market, it is very important for the company to know the potential of the market. It will help us to know about the customers in a better way. The second problem is selecting the region. As you know that the pilot company in New Zealand deals with the farms of kiwi pears and apples. So we have to find the same exact market in Australia for the pilot company. And the third one is the acquiring of raw material. So there are two types of raw material which the pilot company uses in New Zealand. The first one is the hardwood and the second one is the pine wood. So we have to find out the opportunities, the how the pilot company can find out the raw material in 
in Australia or if the raw material is not available there in the country uh, they how can they switch to the other alternatives whether they can switch to the plastic pellets or or other or or the thing they can acquire other timber other form of timber in Australia and the fourth one is the competitors so because the company is going to Australia so it is very important to examine the competitors by examining uh, precisely means that meant that we have to see the competitive advantages of the competitor in Australia for example the competitive advantage of Australian pilot company can be like the labor force can be like the location can be like the number of suppliers they are dealing with and the last then the last problem is the strategic country consideration so in this point we have to find out the best possible mode of entry opportunity for the pilot company so we have to find out whether they are going for the alliance or whether they are going for the build by option so the next part is the investigation method so our investigation kicks off with the meeting with the representative of the pilot company and after the meeting we have conducted our, our regular meetings in that meetings we have secluded our part so that we can uh, we can uh, we can we can improve our outputs during that meetings and third we have gathered a lot of information from the internet from the magazines from the business articles and the literature review the literature review we have read most uh, we have taken the help of the unitech library other than the library we have read the books like world famous of new zealand uh, which were written by the colin campbell in which the 10 most biggest companies in the one of the biggest companies of new zealand has expanded their business internationally uh, with the competitive uh, advantages and other than we have approached the two australian pilot companies the one is low scam and the other is the australian pilot control company but the company refused to share the data with us on a phone call because uh, they told us they, this data is a highly confidential data so we can't give you the data of dimensions the number of suppliers that you want to ask from us and the software that we have used in this project are ms word excel google docs and slides so the further slides will be taken by alan good afternoon everyone this is alan i will talk i, I will talking about analyze First is the fruit world map. It's showing all different kinds of fruit distribution on the world. Yeah. This chart is population of fruit in Australia, which means Australia have lots of different kinds of fruit, such as apple, pear, avocado, uh, melons, pineapple, banana, orange, and so on. From our research, most of fruit are around Queensland and uh, near, uh, near North Wales and uh, Victoria, which is here. Next. Apple and pear uh, industry uh, maps. So apple and pear industry is the largest food industry in Australia, with a combined total of more than 566 million at the farm age. For the apple and pear industry, most of them are around Victoria, which you can see from the map. Uh, yeah. This chart is the total apple production in Australia. It's can, it, we can see from the picture, Victoria got 43% uh, total apple production in Australia. The other one is, is pear production in Australia. We can see Victoria got 89% of total pear production in Australia. Uh, the public company products low, uh, produce low-cost products, that means well, they need to lower their cost. One of the way to reduce cost is to stay around and uh, near customer in order to reduce transportation cost. Therefore, we decided to select and set a company in Victoria. So materials. The left picture is the hardwood distribution in Australia, and the right picture is the pie wood distribution in Australia, which uh, we can see there was lots of hardwood, pie wood, green, uh, Green uh, near Victoria, which means there are lots of supplies there. The competitors. So the picture shows uh, the other pilot company location in Australia. It shows all the competitions which produce pilot in Australia. It can be earlier seen the distribution of pilot company in Victoria. They already have uh, several pilot companies there. Therefore, the competition is uh, uh, is uh, a big problem which need to be considered seriously. The reason why we chose Victoria 
for a new company is Victoria is concentrated place uh, for Apple and Pear. So the left picture shows the uh, origin of Apple and the Pear production. The middle picture shows wood resource in Victoria, and the right picture shows the uh, location of the other comp uh, public company. It seems that the main production area for Apple and Pear is located in south of uh, Victoria, as the pilot company is to provide the pilots for food retail. It is reason to choose Victoria as the location for a new company. More especially, we chose a new company located near Melbourne. Firstly, there are three pilot companies here. The competition is less, which might provide the pilot company a better operation environment. Secondly, the new location is in area of main producing area for apple and pears. Also, it has lots of wood resource in Victoria as well. This would reduce the cost of transportation. Now I will pass to Ben. As I mentioned already, um, we found out what are the most important factors like which region do we want to work in and do we want to expand the um, whole company's business in. But the next big question is um, what's the mode of entry and what's the strategy of the business? You can't just go into a market and try to, to work in there, like you need to have a mode of entry and you need to have a strategy. As the chart shows here, those are the classic five modes of entry most of companies use. But for the pilot company, we actually brought it down to two things. The first one would be a strategic alliance, which would be a possibility. And the second one would be mergers and acquisitions. But actually, we thought during our research that maybe for the pilot company, a really great opportunity would be um, just to set up a new plant. But that's one of the things I'm going to talk in the next slide, which would be our recommendations. To our recommendations, basically, we were able to make four recommendations at that stage for the pallet company. The first one is the selected region. As we all could see, all the important factors we need to um, operate in the market um, are based in Victoria. So there is um, a lot of potential there, especially in the apple and pear industry, but also um, in the kiwi industry and as in all the other um, kind of fruit types we mentioned. The second one is the focus. Like apple and pears should be the focus, especially at the beginning because that's an industry which is really strong in Victoria and after that you can also go to, to extend it and to go to other kind of fruits. Um, the third one is the strategic decisions that needs to be made at that stage. Um, especially it's really important to find out what exactly you want to do. It's it more about finding a strategic alliance or setting up a plan that's like actually this kind of um, build or buy decision and all those things. And that also connects with our last recommendation, which is really important, especially at that point, because um, every international business expansion is really wide and really deep. So there's a lot of information you need to get. There is a lot of um, talks you need to have with businesses in the company, with um, different government institutions and all those kind of things. So at our stage, you think the next step would be to um, send a staff member from the Pellet Company to Australia, have a look in Victoria, drive a bit around, talk to... Um, to distribution centers, talk to the producers of apples and have a look at all those kind of things so to make um, kind of a on-planned observation because it's really hard as um, Katik mentioned before to get really valuable information especially from other companies in the market because they of course don't want to share those information and especially in that kind of area we are able to find a lot of potential um, but we weren't able to be able to see all the critical success factors. So that will be our next stage, just to send someone over there for a few days and check out the market. Thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions, we'd be pleased to answer them. Thanks a lot. I think the apple pear industry in New Zealand is much of the apples and pears are actually exported and that requires possibly a different kind of packaging, namely the crates, the pallets the pallet company makes. How is it different in Australia? Isn't, isn't a lot more consumed locally in Australia and have you managed to discover <coughs> whether there's a different kind of packaging requirement or freighting requirement in Australia? Someone needs to be our water boy. I can take that question. Um, one thing that was really interesting for us was, for example, that a lot of um, the apples who, which are produced in Australia get consumed there. 
So the export of apples isn't that great in Australia, um, but as we can see, for example, the pears, um, there's a, a massive amount um, produced in Victoria especially, and a lot of those things um, also get exported. So it depends on which kind of fruit, and especially on the amounts, but which is really interesting, especially in the Australian market is like the amounts, like New Zealand is already um, quite big in that kind of industry, but compared to Australia, it's actually relatively small. So that's also one thing you have to consider. Like for example, I don't know. Um, let's I don't know exactly. For example, if, I don't know. Let's say just mangoes, for example. And you see them might be really small, but maybe that amount also. If it's a really small industry in Australia, relatively compared to New Zealand, it might be already really big and might be um, worth investing in there. So it's all about um, set, looking at the market potential, looking at each fruit individually and kind of picking what makes sense to go for. But at the beginning we thought that especially the pear and the apple industry, because they are that great and Victoria makes sense to start going into that segment and then um, go from there on. So you mentioned that the apple and pear industry in Australia is worth 500. 566 million. How does that compare to New Zealand? Um, I don't know to be It would be an interesting fact. Um, another question, when you did your research, what drove your initial um, target of going apples and pears? Did, did you look regionally first or did you look at the fruit variety first and that drove the region or did the region drive the fruit variety that you looked at? started with the fruit man we showed at the beginning like we looked at the global um, kind of where are the fruits growing and what's going on and then we looked closer to Australia and then we were already able to see that like especially in the east side of Australia like in Victoria and um, New South Wales that those are like the major areas for fruits growing in Australia and then we looked at the chart so we looked like what are the biggest amounts of fruits and that was really fast clear that it was um, apples and pears and then we broke it down to the different states and as there was really two example charts you put up and um, just for pears and apples but of course there are more and we were really able to see like apples nearly half of the um, national production in Australia as in Victoria and for pears even way more so that's how we brought it down. Yep. Um, the apple production in Australia and the fruit uh, the pear production in Australia, um, again 566 million. What's the split between these two? Which is which is the bigger market? Could we talk we talk uh, regional growth there, but which is which is the bigger one? Uh, I think apple and the pears are both quite important. Uh, we can see uh, from, from this one, we got the actually numbers here. Yep. So yeah, it's quite clear. It's uh, yeah, it's because these two is is the largest uh, fruit industry. So we focus on these two. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of a two third, one third, like two thirds apples, kind of like that. Yeah. And sixty percent apples, forty percent pears. That's an interestingly different statistic in New Zealand. I, I would say, I would guess, uh, it must be about 80, 20 in New Zealand. 80% apples, 20 yeah. But, um, for example, if you look at that chart, um, it goes to 2013. And for example, in um, 2013, there isn't an information what happened to the peers, how much is the comparison, because it's like always a bit drifting, but um, it stays in that kind of kind of 60 40 percentage. Mm -hmm. And I think you also said that the pears, the largest proportion of pears are exported than the proportion of apples. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Like that was one of the most interesting things actually that like a lot of the apples which are produced in Australia stay there so yeah. not like in New Zealand. In New Zealand there's a lot of export yeah. and in Australia um, a lot of consumption actually. Mm. Mike.
So, so you had a look and focused on the apples and pears in, in New South Wales. If I just run my eye down um, that, that table, I can see the oranges stand out there as something which has a, a high number of, uh, I assume this is kilos, no, kilotons, um, that I would assume would be more exportable than maybe apples or pears. Is, is, yeah. Did you slowly... T- did you solely target on apples or pears, or did you do any initial indications on any other fruit varieties? Um, yeah, we focused at the beginning on apple and pears, um, but especially oranges, for example, would be um, totally worth having <coughs> also a closer look at it, because especially for the export. Um, but it also depends a bit, like, especially where you want to go. Like um, At the beginning, we thought like maybe focusing on apples and pears, because that's like what's already in New Zealand really big. So you know the market already really well, um, and maybe if it goes to oranges, there are some modifications. Um, so we took those two, but um, of course it's really easy actually just to um, make it wider and take more fruits into it. And especially um, oranges would be really good, and mandarins as well, for example. Um, wine grapes not, because wine grapes um, get, how we call it, like get chipped differently. That was... Um, we looked at that before because that's a massive amount, but um, it works totally different than apples and pears and those kind of things. But um, there's a lot of potential. Just while we're talking about apples and oranges, um, I, uh, as I vaguely recall, ap- um, apples and oranges, they come to fruition in uh, different parts of the season. So there would be some interest in terms of smoothing the demand for your capacity by, by looking at something that's off season. Um, I think they're about three, four months out of sync with each other. Not sure. Um, the other thing is Tasmania. Um, I like the way that you uh, had the three maps of where the fruit are, where the competitors are, and where the pine uh, raw material is available. Um, and I, one of the things that sprang out at me was Tasmania. A lot of and there was uh, well, there was a lot of apples I think grown there or pit fruit grown there, but there was only one uh, pallet maker. Was was I correct in that? memory so Tasmania might be a next best alternative with weak weak competition in the pallet making and we focus more on Australia and Australia. we focus more on Australia because um, it's like in Tasmania you have one huge advantage which would be the export because everybody is nearly exported like um, whether to Australia or then um, in other parts of the world um, but the potential in especially Victoria or New South Wales is that massive that it just would make sense to kind of go in that region and just have, you have a way bigger opportunity. Like in Tasmania, there would be big potential, but if you already start going into a new market, then it would make sense to go where, where you have more opportunities. And then if you're set there, you could, for example, go to Tasmania and set up their plant, or you can go from um, Victoria to the other end of um, New South Wales, for example, and set up there another plant and expand from there. But we figured out that especially Victoria and that kind of region, um, Al mentioned, would be a really good point to, to start with. So you recommend Victoria as a kind of the, the beachhead location. Yeah. You can survive yeah. in Victoria with a more intense yeah. competition. And that's, you can go anywhere else. Yeah. that's what we kind of also found out when we um, read a lot of literature. Um, especially the pellet company has a really um, good competitive advantage like uh, as Sandy mentioned that's the quality of the pellets especially the time and the quantity and the price of course and if you take those four things into account and look at the competitive advantage and you put that into the Australian market of course there are other competitors but I'm pretty sure that the pellet company with the experience it's had in the kind of market and all those kind of things it's really competitive and it could grow there um, quite well and you can take Victoria as kind of the region and the stage where you can go further. So you can expand in the Australian market. And if that works well, um, the next step would be probably um, in, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years, for example, the US in a few areas. Um, very interested to hear the um, reactions, I guess, of the competitors over there. 
what sort of questions did you ask them and how did you handle their uh, their responses? Yeah, we have asked about the dimensions of the pallet they use there in Australia and the suppliers to whom they are supplying the peers, whether the dimension of the peers and the apples are different and how they are managing, how they are acquiring the raw material from which part of Australia they are acquiring the raw material but uh, they told us it's a very highly confidential information we can't share you with the with you guys so we hang up the phone and <laughs> You've, you've, read, you've read some literature there. You've, you've read Colin Campbell Hunt's book, World Famous in New Zealand. What are and, and quite a few New Zealand companies have come a cropper in um, in Australia. That's a New Zealand word for they've fallen over flat on their face. Um, what are some of the insights that you've gained from your literature about New Zealand companies trying to make good in Australia? After reading that uh, literature from the Colin Campbell, the company which I have read about is the Montana, it's a wine company in New Zealand, which has gone to Australia, but he couldn't be able to uh, restrict to the competitive advantage which he has in New Zealand. So gaining the maintaining the same competitive advantage when you're going to the international market is very important. Most of the companies in New Zealand while they're working, they have the competitive advantage like price quality and the price quality. But when they are going to Australia, they, they cannot maintain that competitive advantage in another part of the world. So this is, this is the most biggest challenge for the companies, how they can maintain their competitive advantage in another part of the world. Maybe adding to that, like what Kaltik said, that's the critical success for stuff for the um, pallet company. Like it's really important for them to keep their competitive advantage, um, and that's actually to produce um, a large amount of pallets and deliver them exactly at the right time um, to the customers. Because um, in that kind of industry, it's all about like a few days. Like if you deliver it, I don't know, four or five days late, um, you have a serious problem. So it's really about. And producing the right amount of pellets for the right price and deliver them at the right time that's the competitive advantage and that's what the pellet company has to focus on Australia and has to keep it and if they are able to do that which should be possible on the research we done um, then they should be successful in the Australian market No more questions? No. no. Okay, thanks, Dave. Give me a hand. A very professional uh, proposal and also the PowerPoint slides. Very impressive. Good. Yeah, I'll already reiterate that. Um, in a previous life, I used to work for Fletcher Building. I had a lot to do with consultants and things like that, and these are. Uh, consultant worthy slides that competitive advantage slide brilliant yeah really really good stuff uh, I really like the, uh, the the graphs that you've you've presented in here giving us a good visual uh, support for this this crucial decision the company uh, needs to contemplate Yeah, I would like to commend you guys. You used very much uh, visual diagrams and graphs very in a better way. And the question handling was perfect. I loved it. I agree. Yeah, good handouts, nice paper, <laughs> very good quality. Yeah, you put a lot of effort to in collecting uh, information with maps, graphs. Thank you. Uh, as far as I know, you don't need to put full stops on the titles um, yeah <laughs> as for the slides so I would recommend to to check like a final check before uh, printing it and when you're handling the questions maybe to um, move the slides so everyone could 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 see what 
what are you talking about, which uh, exactly map you're talking about, because some of the maps are really small and you can, can't read it from the slides. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to add to Yulia's comment that there was a pie chart that couldn't be read properly. It wasn't clear, so maybe you can bold the text or highlight it so that it's visible. Uh, just check, check your facts with Seth about the use of hardwoods to manufacture pallets in New <coughs> Zealand. I'm not no, they don't use hardwoods. So I think you did mention that they did use hardwoods in Australia. That might be a possible might be a possibility. I don't know, but just check that. Um, uh, there was one graph which I can't find. You had you showed three maps um, separately and explained what they were, and then you brought them all together. Um, and I had kind of forgotten which map was which at that stage. So make sure that on that figure with the three maps, one of them says this is the competitors, this is the source of, of plantation timber, and this is where the fruit are grown. Um, and I think you'd be able to do something really magical uh, with a uh, keep those and then an, an animation which brings all three together and, and shows this is this is where the obvious foci or focus of, of attention uh, is in terms of market number one is uh, Victoria, market number two might be Tasmania, market number three might be Alice Springs or something like that. <laughs> okay. I've got a, I've got a few points, um, both both good and, and, and areas of improvement. I thought the start was was excellent, really really good. You know, got the audience thinking. Okay, you've got a business, you've got to this level. What do you do next? You know, starts people thinking, gets that that bit of engagement that you need immediately. Um, the slide, this what's next slide. I think that can be just expanded on a little more, because almost we've gone. So this company's got to a certain level, they're thinking about what's next, bang, we're looking at fruit in Australia. You just need to say they've looked at two or three other things such as you know, uh, acquisition in New Zealand or other sectors or another company to buy and this is the area that we're looking at in particular rather than just honing straight down into um, your, your uh, presented problem. Um, there's another... Oh, that comparison to New Zealand with the with the fruit, uh, the apples and pears, because if you say to me there's uh, was it 400 kiloton of apples and pears in Australia, that number means nothing to me. If you say that is six times the New Zealand market, all of a sudden that means a lot to me, or you know it's a quarter of the New Zealand market because it then starts to put some dollars around it. Um, you could go you, if if it's a quarter of the New Zealand market, then we might spend two hundred thousand dollars. To try and set up over there, but if it's worth six times, then we might spend a million dollars to get in there. So it just puts that that relevancy and and that comparison number, which puts it into something that we understand. Um, and I think while you're doing those statistics, uh, at the same time you want the mix of exports and imports. So compare New Zealand, Victoria, some of the other states, um, and and also show the relative. Import, sorry, export and, and local co consumption, and, and I think that will help give a sense of scale mm. because what they are interested in, presumably, is is the pallets and crates for for export. And at this stage, you you don't know what is used for internal freight of of these this produce mm. and the last point I'd make is and, and I sort of pushed you guys on this about you know how, how did you all, all of a sudden arrive at uh, Victoria and apples and pears um, I think I needed to be taken on a journey as to how you got to that and how you excluded some of the other uh, crops and areas um, you don't have to take very long on it could we just you know a 10 second explanation about here's why uh, you know because at the end of the day we do have an expertise in that area we have got experience in that area therefore we went to that yep. 
yeah, maybe a further, further future investigations into uh, the recommendations when you apply to uh, to Australia, and then more practices for presentation, maybe. Yeah. Any more pos a positive points to uh, end up with? I just remarked I like the imagine statement that you made at the beginning. Imagine you were doing this or that or that. That was a, a nice way to capture a, a engagement, a different way than the other teams. Um, I think it worked well for me. Yep. I'll go back to the quality of the handout and the quality of the slides. Very good. Mm. Agree. Totally agree. Any more comments? No? Give them a hand. Okay.